Patrol F-14s killed four naval aviators and destroyed seven aircraft, costing $245 million. Investigations show that the F-14's vicious flat spin characteristics had prevented pilots from physically being able to recover the Tomcat. However, 1980, the Navy formed a special unit on each coast to train pilots to deal with the F-14's treacherous, out-of-control flight characteristics before the aircraft became unrecoverable. In the five years since then, more than twice as many F-14 hours have been flown, the accident rate has been chopped in half, and no lives have been lost. In 1984 and 85, there were no accidents at all involving out-of-control F-14s. For over a year, one of the three elite instructors who daily fly the hazardous spin missions has been this woman, Naval Aviator Lieutenant Linda Schaefer, assigned to VF-43 in Oceana, Virginia. In this exclusive report, the Navy allowed this CNN reporter to undergo the wild, out-of-control flight training with Lieutenant Schaefer as instructor, the first time that a civilian pilot has ever been allowed to fly through the course. The special unit, Adversary Squadron VF-43, has the mission of simulating Soviet aircraft and tactics. The squadron uses a number of different jet aircraft to mimic the performance of various Soviet fighters. Its elite aviators zoom into mock air battles several times daily using Soviet tactics in order to hone the air combat skills of Navy and Marine Corps fighter and attack pilots. Since 1980, however, VF-43 has had the added job of using these T-2 Buckeye jet trainers to teach naval aviators how to recover from out-of-control flight. This risky and dangerous course of instruction is taught by Lieutenant Schaefer and two other instructors, including Program Chief Lieutenant Commander P.J. Fuller. It's a building process. We show people the early stall phases, then we kick them into departures, we take them into various forms of post-stall gyrations to get them used to it, then into early phase of a spin, then into a steady state phase of a spin, then we throw in uh, a few interesting maneuvers to make it all worthwhile. To make it all worthwhile for the Navy, however, okay. they made sure I was qualified. Eject. I was blasted upward in an ejection seat trainer, jerked in a parachute harness and dropped into the water, pulled out of the water by a simulated helicopter rescue hoist, and then I was blindfolded and put into a water crash trainer and dunked several more times to make sure that I was thoroughly drown proof. Then I was sky proof. With a Navy instructor, I flew some high G aerobatics, looping and rolling across the Virginia skies. The centrifugal force of the maneuvers made me pull as much as six times the normal force of gravity as I flew chase in a T-38 supersonic trainer behind three of the squadron's other aircraft. Up over, around, and down in formation. Then a stint at air combat training. During one violent maneuver against two F-14s, one of the Tomcat fighters went flashing by at a closing speed of 1,600 miles an hour, less than 300 feet away. An error at that speed would have filled the sky with exploding coal. Then came the hard part, intensive classroom preparation for the out of control flight syllabus. VF-43 assigned me their most thorough instructor, Lieutenant Linda Schaefer, the only female spin pilot in the entire United States Navy. Around the squadron, only call signs are used. Lieutenant Schaefer's call sign is Peaches. For days, Peaches drummed the recovery procedures into my head until it became a sort of catechism. We're going to get the aircraft, and then F-14 procedures. Neutral lateral, harness lock, program stick forward. As the aircraft recovers, you'll feel it recovering out of that. I want you to pull it out and uh, climb back up to 24,000. In the classroom, Lieutenant Schaefer, who is determined to become a test pilot, demonstrated her trademark thoroughness. She meticulously detailed every aspect of 10 gut-wrenching, eyeball-squashing, nausea-inducing maneuvers. So, part the aircraft again, 24,000, throttles off, we'll left rudder, full right off stick at 120, and uh, we'll go past the incipient phase, and then the aircraft will be about 30 degrees nose slow, steady state yaw, going around the horizon. I'll be talking to you through all of this so you see all the phases, and I'll tell you when to recover. When I ask you to recover, again, look at the turn needle, rudder opposite, stick into it. After a final review of emergency procedures, we headed out to the aircraft. Lieutenant Commander Fuller would fly the chase airplane with Lieutenant Pomp Pompier in the front seat shooting videotape. We started our engines and taxied out to the active runway. After receiving clearance, we began a formation takeoff. 
We headed out to the practice area some 60 miles south over the swamps of Dare County, North Carolina. After some warm-up maneuvers, we began the syllabus. First came the ballistic departure. Fly the airplane straight up and then let her fall. As the jet flopped over, I performed the recovery procedures that Peaches had drummed into me. Neutral lateral stick, harness locked, program stick forward, and pull out of the dive. After increasingly difficult maneuvers with names like accelerated departures, incipient spins, and rudder triples, came the upright spin. Following Peach's calm instructions, I slowed the jet down. As it started to shake just before reaching stall speed, I kicked in hard rudder and opposite aileron. The T2 flipped around and began to gyrate like a falling leaf. <laughs> The white trail behind the aircraft was normal. It was fuel being automatically vented to equalize tank pressures. Again, I recovered using the standard F-14 recovery procedures that Lieutenant Schaefer had taught me earlier. Then came the inverted spin. I started a loop. When the aircraft was upside down, I pushed the nose up waited for the aircraft to stop flying and pushed in full rudder. Instantly, I was upside down, hanging from the harness in negative G, being pushed towards the canopy. It was hard to reach the stick and rudder pedals. The maneuver is very disorienting, but I remembered Peach's instruction and looked for the turn needle to see which way I was spinning. Then I neutralized the controls and the jet popped upright, but the aircraft was going downhill very fast and started doing recovery rolls. Surprisingly, the move that Peaches induced was matter of fact. As I recovered, there was even time for banter. 